This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. We are back live inside the Georgia Dome after a festive halftime here. Getting ready to start the third quarter. The Vikings of Lyons leading at 7-0 over the Wildcats of Camden County. In a first half, that saw that only one score by the Wildcats. But here are some of the highlights from this first half, DJ. We'll take a look here. And uh, the sophomore quarterback from Lyons County got a fumble there in the first quarter there to actually eliminate a chance to score. Here's a red zone fumble by the sophomore quarterback that could have led to another score. Here's a touchdown pass to Greg Reed to put the Vikings up 7-0. And just before the half, of course, a huge play by the defensive end, Dominique Jordan, getting a sack on the quarterback there to guess end the half. And there you have it, seven nothing, Lowndes County. First half statistics: the most telling in that first half is on the right hand side, total yards. Wildcats of Camden County with just 29 yards total offense in the first half. That will not get it done here to Dome. Not at all. You have to give yourself a chance. And I know that uh, according into the halftime, some adjustments were made. Coach Herring and, of course, uh, his whole staff trying to regroup so that they can get some points on the board. Vikings pretty much on stride at 194 yards in that first half. A lot of that are pretty balanced. 103 on the ground, 91 through the air. The Vikings need to maintain. And it's, it's hold on to the ball. You know, those three turnovers in the first half could have been dangerous. But unfortunately for Vikings, it didn't hurt him. Greg Reed with three receptions. John Nelson standing by at sideline. Nelly. Just talked to Jeff Heron really quickly. He told his guys at halftime they looked like they were flat and that they'd been riding on a bus all day. It reminded him of the last time they were at the Dome, so they're going to have to really kick it in gear for the next 24 minutes. Sa safe to say they got a bit of a tongue lashing at the break. Probably right on that, Nelly. 29 yards in that first half. Very uncharacteristic for that Wildcat high potent offense. And we'll see what kinds of adjustments Coach Herring and his coaching staff have made as we get set for this, this third quarter of action from this 5 8 semifinal matchup. Winner advances to the championship ball game next weekend against the Bulldogs of North Gwinnett. And we'll take a look at scores from the dome this weekend. It was Wilcox, winners over the Spartans of Athens Academy in the Class A Division, 32 14. Clinch County also lost in that ball game against the Bulldogs of Emanuel Institute. The Bulldogs of Emanuel Institute win at 35 14 in the other Class A matchup. In the Triple A, it was the Carver Tigers defeating the Bulldogs of Chamley, coming back from behind to win that one, 26 24. Fortune with the eight receptions in that ball game. And a good ball game last night. It was the Eagles of Northside besting the Tigers of Tucker, 31 to 28. Ivory 11 of 16 for 288 yards. The Yellow Jackets of Thomas County Central ended their season last night at the hands of the Gators of Ware County. Final in that one, 10 to 7. Cox with a good performance for the Ware County Bull Gators. And it was the Wolves 48 to nothing over the Fighting Irish in the Double A matchup earlier today. The Lions of Lovett advanced with a 29-16 win over the Hornets of Cook at Double-A football. And in the Triple-A ranks, it was the Syrup Makers pouring over the Trojans 42-21, and they advanced. Bryant with 19 rushes and 228 yards for the Syrup Makers. The Bulldogs, we talked about them advancing to the finals in the 5A. They will de be defeated the Raiders of Walton 31-7 in the 6 p.m. ball game. They will get the winner of this contest between the Vikings and the Wildcats of Camden County. We are set to start this third. Charles Ward along with D.J. Jones, John Nelson at sideline. Charles will find out very early on if that tongue lashing by Coach Heron was effective to get this team going here, Camden County going here in the second half. They will have first crack on it at offense, DJ. Willis to kick. Deep kick by Willis. Over the heads of the receivers to the 20-yard line. The Wildcats will start the offense from there. In the first half, it was the short control passing game that didn't really equate to a whole lot. We're going to go and see how, of course, those adjustments were made at halftime. Some last minute instructions there by Coach Heron before he sends his offensive team on the field. Wildcats of Camden County really turning into one of the more preeminent programs in football in the state of Georgia. Since 1970, they have been uh, only the Wildcats and Warner Robins have more wins than the Wildcats. 
On the ground, it's Heron spinning ahead near the 25-yard line, up near the 26. Good job of executing there. Of course, uh, you can tell that uh, he has a new attitude there. Of course, the leader quarterback there, Major Heron, got a player down on the field, though, from Camden. That's Josh Delly, the offensive lineman, the junior for the Wildcats. Just underway in this third quarter. And Delly a bit shaken. Coach Heron obviously concerned. Coming from the sideline to the field to check on the junior offensive lineman. You know that first play by Camden. You know you can definitely tell that was a little pep in the step of the quarterback as he was able to go down the line and pick up the positive yardage six yard gain. All of the teammates looking on as concerned there with the teammate limping off the field. And Daly coming up. And and just a quick reminder that we'll be back at this again next weekend here on GPB with the championship ball games on Friday at 7.30 p.m. It's the 4A state championship, the Eagles of Northside Warner Robins and the Gators of Ware County. Then on Saturday night at 7.30, it'll be the Bulldogs of North Gwinnett meeting either the Wildcats of Camden County or the Vikings of Lowndes. 7 nothing, your score. On the ground, left side angling back to the inside, but not a whole lot of room in there. Nice stick by the Lowndes County defense there, up inside there. Number 57, Devin Simmons. It was Darrell Williams on that carry for the Wildcats. Third down and three. Wildcats surely do not want to go three and out. Heron with the football. Comeback screen. Catch by Smith. Smith lost the football. Could not hold on to it. The Wildcats had something working there as Heron was looking to get the ball to Smith for the tunnel screen. And usually when you got a mixed direction screen, tunnel screen coming back up inside, it was an alley in there. It looked like he had some room to, to get a first down. Total yardage thus far, 194 for the Vikings, just 36 for the Wildcats. And they are getting set to punt it away here. Reed will stand deep. Heron with the kick. Fair catch called for by Reed at the 38-yard line, or make it the 39. And the Vikings back on offense. You know, Charles, as we talk about the ineffectiveness of the offense of Camden County, I think we, you know, it may, it's not so much as to what they're not doing. Maybe we should be talking about how impressive the Vikings defense is performing. I mean, because they have something to do with that, that low amount of yardage. And indeed, you're right. So let's do that. <laughs> Vikings have been very impressive in terms of shutting down that wing T offense of the Wildcats. Numbers speak to it. But in terms of player personnel and what they've done on the field, they have done a good job. First and ten. Right side with the football is Perry. Perry got some room at the corner. He is inside Wildcat territory near the 46-yard line. Nice game there and a nice job by the Lounge offensive right side. Again, you look at that. Right there, those whole holes are being opened up there by, of course, 65 Lane Grant, Brady Brantley, and Ed Christian. Perry runs it for the first down. Look at the big lineman pulling out there, number 65, Lane Grant. Hustling on down the field. That's very rare to see a lineman pulling and end up 15 yards down the field. Need you right. We talk about pep talks. I'm sure Coach McPherson gave the Vikings one as well, despite the fact they were leading 7 0. Now coming to the left side is Reed. He'll try to turn the corner, but his jersey is grabbed, and Michael Green slings him down to the ground. Fantastic play by Michael Green coming up and maintaining contain there because uh, Reed was a step away from being outside and off to the races. He has the corner there again, but the sure tackle there by Green getting him down. Had he not been there, we could have been looking at Reed standing in the end zone. 
And let's not forget the couple of fumbles that the Vikings, you alluded to that as we looked at the first half highlights, but this ball game could have a very different complexion altogether That's right. had the Vikings not fumbled that football. So the Wildcats lucky in that regard, but the Vikings know that they have the ability to penetrate or push that football down the field. They have just got to finish. Inside handoff. Pick up of maybe two tough yards on the inside by Tavares Williams for the Wildcats. Wildcats defensive front, Ben Stetson, Dominic Jordan, and Ridge Williams playing tough. Take another look at it up inside, running right into the heart of it. Of course, Stetson there is, of course, maintaining his ground with the center there, and his defensive ends are, end up making the play. Third down and seven. Vikings at the 43-yard line of Camden County. Their first possession of the second half. On the ground, Williams with a couple of blockers in front of him. Nice job by number 80, Justin Orr, tripping up the sophomore quarterback short of the first down. That play showed the potential to be able to develop fairly well, but the Wildcats did a good job of closing it. Take a look at uh, Orr closing on the speech during quarterback Kari Franklin to trip him up. So now Hayden Martin will kick it away. Fourth down and four. Martin, flat kick, and it goes out of bounds. They say that Martin's punt went out of bounds near the 21-yard line, and that is where the Wildcats of Camden County will take it over. 8.29 remaining in this third quarter. Misdirection, Heron will keep it right side. Bang, as he tries to turn the corner. Good defensive work, and coming up with the stick for the Wildcats are the Vikings. It's Tavares Williams. He's having a big football game for the Vikings. Williams is playing like a grown man out there, standing his ground, maintaining his leverage, and, of course, doing what he's supposed to do, making the tackle squared up there, driving the quarterback into the ground. Loss of a yard on the play. I tell you, it's a very stout Vikings defense. Aaron, short look out in the flats. Catch made by outside receiver Michael Green. Green up near the 30-yard line, close to the 31, and close to the first down marker, DJ. Nice throw and catch. Take a look here as Heron gets the ball out quick. Green was the ninth catch and getting all the yardage he can. Gets another two yards after making the catch. Nice shot from a camera crew of that reception by Green. Beautiful. Just shy of the first down marker. Third down and one. There's a good looking shot of Green there. He's had some nice plays on the defensive side and from his secondary position on defense for Camden County. Green just a junior for the Wildcats. Third down and one. Heron will keep it. He's got enough for the first down. They pull him down near the 34, perhaps the 35. Solomon on the stop for the Vikings. You know, I'm feeling Major Heron, and, I, and I, you can tell he's, he's a new guy. The past couple of plays that he's run the ball, you see him exploding and bursting for positive yardage. I got a feeling he maybe he did get a good kick, in, good stiff kick in the behind on the inside there of the locker room by his dad. First down situation, Lowndes with 12, Camden but only two. There's still, coach. Still a lot of football ahead of us though, DJ. Yes, it is. Coming with the sweep. Left side is Baker. Baker got it up past the 40, up near the 43 yard line. You get a sense that there's definitely a tempo being it's changing here, and they're picking it up a little bit on the Camden County side. The offense is moving the ball. Nice run here by Baker behind some blockers here, finding a little crease, a little seam. You slip up inside there for some positive yards. Players for Camden County trying to wrap themselves up. You can see Baker after that run. Yes. Kind of pumping himself up. Second down and one after the nine-yard scamper by Baker. 6.06 remains in the third. Wow. 
Wildcats made the playoffs for 19 consecutive seasons. That's playing some good football. Last year they lost to Warner Robins in the second round. As you take a look at a camera shot, we're right on top of it. And you see the distance required for the first down. So make it second down and one. I think it's safe to say that this is a very important offensive drive for the Wildcats from Camden County. I think it'll make a statement if they're able to get the ball down and get some points on the board. They know that's what they need to do. Yes. Second, and it's really not a full yard required for the first down. They're going to go back to the left side again. And it's Baker with the football, and Baker's got the first down for the Wildcats. Tackle made by Devin Simmons, the defensive end on the, the right side of the Vikings defense. Now the Wildcats may have found something on that side of the defense that they, they think they can take advantage of. Again, you like the energy. You like the energy. You like the way they come out and attack this Vikings defense here. You, there's definitely a difference now than in the first half. First and ten. They come back to the left again. Short side of the field is Baker. Spins his way near midfield. Gerald Demps in on the stop for the Viking defense. Nice tackle by Demps after a good gain by Baker. Take a look at Baker getting the handoff coming back across the field inside. Slipping one tackle. Getting some positive yardage there. Getting outside and look at that wrap up. Good look at that good tackle by Dennis. Indeed, indeed it was. Good sure tackle. Second and seven. Under five minutes remaining. They go back on the inside this time. Chris White on the carry for the Wildcats. They get it inside of Viking territory. Camden County testing the heart of the Vikings defense going up inside against T.J. Manning and Ridge Spivey. Those two defensive linemen up inside. Football at the 48-yard line. Clock rapidly moving in this third. Aaron, pressure coming from the backside, and they're going to get a sack on him. Michael Copeland from the backside, able to run down Heron for the sack. And the linebacker came on the blitz and came to the blind side of Heron for a huge play. Looked like he had a couple of receivers open down the field, but you notice to the top of your screen, Copeland comes around the corner and makes the big play. There's another look. And you get the sense that the Vikings saw something at the line of scrimmage that tipped that play off because they had the perfect defense for that. Copeland able to get the sack. Fourth down now, and the Wildcats will have to punt it. Reed will stand deep. Catches it at the 20. Short side of the field. Lex taken from under him at the 25-yard line. So the Vikings able to stop that drive of the Wildcats and get the football back with 3.13 remaining in the third quarter. It's viewers like you that help make great local programs like these high school football games possible on GPB. To show your support, simply call one of the numbers on your screen or visit our website at, w at, at www.gpb.org backslash support. And thank you for supporting Georgia Public Broadcasting. Still plenty of time left here in the game for Camden County's offense to get going, but boy, that was a big drive that uh, they sure. didn't get opportunity to take advantage of. Took a lot of time off the yes. clock as well with no points. Ari Franklin will keep it himself or left it in the belly of the fullback. Demps with the carry for the Vikings. And he got about one, perhaps two on the pickup. Franklin does such a good job with the ball fake. 
Demp's able to pick up three yards on that play, DJ. Camden County is going to have to depend on their defense to get them the ball back so that they can continue on, I thought, what was a positive effort on that last possession. Although they came up short, they still moved the ball, and you could tell that they were definitely a different offensive team than they were in the first half. Second and seven. They go right side this time. It's Adrian Hargett with the carry. Justin Orr on the tackle. And Orr has been busy for the Wildcat defense. You see Orr slips in here and makes the play behind the line of scrimmage. Down the line pursuit. Yes. And it takes a football IQ to understand that, you know, if just because you don't have a guy crossing your face, you squeeze it down. And that's exactly what Orr was able to do. He wasn't going to wait on anybody to come. He wanted to close to the football. That's what the good ones do defensively. Third down, six. Right side. Perry looking for some room. He'll have to come back the other way if, he'll, if he can find it. He will not. Justin Orr with another stop behind the line of scrimmage. And that defense for Candy County understands they're trying to get the ball back for their offense. A lot of guys running to the ball. Take a look here and you can see the athleticism of the running back here. If we don't have guys running to the ball, he could come out the backside and make something big happen. But it's always great to have all 11 guys running to the football. You never know. You're absolutely right. A good work on the left side of that Wildcat defense for, defense forced Perry back the other way. Now Martin will kick it away. And McCray will stand deep. Flag in the backfield at the point of the punt. Dwayne Coleman was trying to block that punt and ran into the punter. And I tell you, you know, uh, boy, that's cost. That's tough. That's tough. Just when you do what you need to do defensively to get the ball back to your offense. It's going to take a mature group to forget about this. And that defense is going to have to come back on the field and hold them again when they had already stopped them. A minute remaining in the third. I certainly understand what Dwayne Coleman was trying to do. He was trying to make the big play. Unfortunately, he got there a little late, ran into the punter. His teammates are just going to have to hunker down and continue to play. Jeff Harron's face just showed it all <laughs> after that, too. Yeah. Total yards thus far. That is. A 94 yards in that first half, but in the second half, Camden starting to come alive defensively. Franklin rolling right side, trying to get it out to the Daria Perry, who was coming on a crossing route, but led him too far. Pass incomplete. Perry was open, but I tell you, you got to give credit to this defense. Camden County right back on the field after holding him. Here's a look here as the sophomore quarterback is sprinting to his right. Has a receiver dragging all the way across the field. That's a tough route to cover. Indeed it is. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. We're under a minute remaining, remaining in this third quarter. Another low scoring game thus far. At this level, you're just not able to execute and do the things you would ordinarily do during the regular course of the season. Your competition is just as good. Franklin will keep it this time. Well, no, he gave it, left it in the belly. <laughs> it was Williams once again. You got to love it. The, you know, the young <laughs> sophomore quarterback, and I'm, I'm, I'm a big advocate of the quarterback following through on your fakes because you never know. Even if you're not as quick as he is, you're still the play fakes. It makes it that much more effective when you pass the ball. Look at this. Everybody in the ballpark probably thought that the runner had or the quarterback still had the ball when the ball was up inside. They should give him like a jersey, the jersey that changes colors or something <laughs> when he doesn't have it. So we won't get fooled. I love coaches that teach your quarterback to follow through after he's handed the ball off. Franklin doing a wonderful job with that. Third down seven. From their own 43. Misdirection. This time it's Reed looking for some room at the corner. Fights off one would-be tackler and get, works his way near that first down marker. Michael Green pushed him out of bounds. Yeah, you got it. I like Michael Green's maturity there staying at home. If you're keeping track of this kind of thing, this is our 80th quarter of broadcast coverage from the Georgia Dome on GPB this weekend. Great job by the whole crew. Fourth down as we start this fourth quarter. Hunt by the Vikings will be filled at 
by the Wildcats at the 20 yard line and they'll go on offense to start this fourth and final quarter from the Georgia Dome. <laughs> I'm being told we're near 40 instead. <laughs> Forty quarters of football action. That's a from lot the of Georgia football. Dome. That's a lot of football, man. Great job, guys. And this is the twelfth year. Twelfth year. Eleven. I believe we're at eleven. Yeah. Right side. Heron with the football up near the twenty-five yard line. Desmond Miller and Tavares Williams on the stop for the Vikings. Lowndes leading at 7 nothing. Winner advances to the championship ball game next weekend against the Bulldogs of North Gwinnett. Strong performance by the Bulldogs in their win earlier today. Aaron short drop fires at the corner but threw it high and out of bounds. Intended for Travon Fulton. And that one you got to climb the ladder to get it. Yep. We saw enough of those uh, control passes up in the first half. I got a feeling though that uh, there's something brewing in. In that passing game with Camden County and that short passing game obviously double moves and that type of thing. You see here the quarterback gets released gets rid of the ball pretty quickly. Just keep in the back of your mind double move Charles. I got it third down and 60 Jay. So the Vikings taking a timeout on that third down and six effort. And just elaborating a little bit on double move. Well, we got a break in the action. We caught up with Coach Jeff Heron prior to this ball game to get his thoughts about what he really likes about the profession of coaching. Well, you know, I, as I said earlier, I think uh, the ability to watch a, a group of kids come together and and become a football team and do something special and you know that camaraderie you have with them that you have with the coaches and uh, you know we don't have a job you know we have a hobby and, and it's a fun thing to do every day when you get up and go to work and you know I enjoy that tremendously. And clarifying that term a double move and you know with the quick passing game that has been shown so far by Camden County you, 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 you give the pump fake and uh, you got a receiver that'll go down and make his initial cut but with the pump fake He'll do he'll make another move and obviously trying to take advantage of the antsy defensive players could free him up a lot of you see that in a lot of cases especially when you got these short passes, these short crisp passes that Camden County has displayed in the early goings here. Excellent point. Good point of clarification there DJ because we have seen that from the Wildcats they've been showing throwing very short passes even on the ones that were incomplete. Third down and six. Aaron will roll it left side. They're going up top. Got a man behind the coverage, but good defensive work by that Viking secondary, Gerald Dimps, out there to bat that bat football away at the last moment. Nice play by the defensive backs there of Lowndes County, but you know what? I think with a little bit more air up under that, that might have been taken to the house. You see that Heron is rolling to his left. He got a little air up under it, but I think the receiver had to slow down. He was well beyond the defenders. A little bit more air and that was a good positioning by the defensive back but I just got a feeling that if it was a little bit more air a couple of more yards out there he'd be standing in the end zone. Heron will backpedal now and punt it away for the Wildcats. This one will bounce at the 50 yard line and pretty much die close there to it. It rolls near the 48 and that's where the Lions Vikings will take the football back. They lead it 7 nothing. 10:58 remaining in this semifinal football game. Still plenty of time for both teams to make a statement. Whether it be the Vikings to go down and stick it in the end zone, or whether it be Camden and their good defense that they've been playing the last couple of series to make the stop and to try to finally get some points on the board themselves. You talk about it in that third quarter that this one could come down to the wire and it's just kind of teetering right there on the fence. Nobody really asserting themselves to just take control of this football game. <laughs> 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 
Shotgun, direct snap, right to Franklin. A correction, it was Reed on the direct snap, and Reed got it inside the 40, down near the 38-yard line of the Wildcats. Reed taking that direct step, snap there. They look they had similarities of the quarterback, Kari Franklin, up inside there. But he's very dangerous, as we've seen him in the return game. So Reed still in there and showing him as quarterback. Reed again. Just tucks it and tries to run left side, trying to find the corner. He does. Steps over one would-be tackler. And hit hard there near the 26-yard line. Lamar Owens with the stick on him. But Greg Reed with some nice running on the direct snap for the Vikings. Yes, that's, just, that's some great running here as he comes out and finds some spots running for daylight. Eluding some tackle, breaking tackles. Fine increases and exploding up the field. Just playing, uh, just a great football player with elusiveness. The coaches say, hey, you go in there, take take the direct snap, make it happen. And it's almost as the Wildcats are saying, well, you know, on the one hand, it's pretty good because we know what he's going to do, but maybe we don't. Same set for the Vikings. This time he'll try it right side. Flags coming in at the line of scrimmage. Thought I saw some movement from one of the guards pulling out early, but we'll see what the indication is. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Getting a little antsy there. I know that they're excited that they have uh, the 5'9 junior in there taking the direct snap and making positive things happen, but got to stay, stay in your game. So that will push the Vikings back five yards. Line of scrimmage now, the 31 of the Wildcats. 9.50 remaining. Vikings going to a Tim Tebow type effect with the direct snap. Reed, now he's going to throw it. That's what they were trying to set up, but it's picked off. Picked off by Michael Green. The Wildcats get their first break, and Green still with the football. Motors at midfield looking for a block. Finally goes down at the 49-yard line, and the Wildcats keep working and keep working, and they finally get the turnover. Once again, Michael Green, you noticed in the first half, had some big plays by staying at home on the defensive side. The defensive back was not fooled. Went up, got the ball at his highest point, and made something happen, giving his team another chance to put some points on the board. But excellent defender, Michael Green, advancing the ball for some positive yards and putting his team in a good position to make something happen. I was referencing that a few moments, moments ago, DJ, talking about the Wildcats looking at it and saying, well, we know what they're going to do, but maybe we don't. <laughs> they do know they thought the possibility of a pass would come, and they were ready for it. Right. Green with the interception. Here come the Wildcats now. Hard run left side by McCray, but hit hard at the line of scrimmage. McCray got three on the pickup. As you take a look at Michael Green, the junior has turned in a fine performance for the Wildcats. Yeah, that young man has definitely had a great day on the defensive side of the ball for Camden County. Turnovers on the night. Lounge with two. Wildcats with one. Right. Right side, McCray looking for some room, not a whole lot there. Trying to get a surge there on that right side of the offensive line there. And I'm talking about Josh Deli as well as Omar Sanez. Trying to open up some holes for their running back. Take another look here. Getting some creases there, but uh, Vikings are doing a good job of playing off these blockers. Third down, four. Reverse on the inside. They give the football to Williams. Williams met at the line of scrimmage. And look at that surge of white jerseys by the Viking defense. Well, they're playing like they obviously have been here before, and they understand that there's no time to let up. You can see nobody got fooled. And everybody running to the ball. Stan Williams up short of the first down. Third down. And obviously with less than eight minutes to go, it looks like the Wildcats are going to take a chance 
on this fourth down play. We're running out of time here, DJ. So maybe the opportunity for the gut check on this fourth down play. They will go for it on fourth and four. Huge play for Camden County. Timeout taken by the Vikings. Or at least come to the line of scrimmage with an extended Timeout, snap count. County, their second. That gives Coach Herring another, a little bit more opportunity to decide on how what he wants to do on this big play for his offensive football team. I'll tell you what, uh, both, uh, both teams should be commended on the hard fault efforts by both sides throughout the game. These kids have played really hard today. And again, when you think about it, it's just a shame that someone has to go home, you know? Did you right? Two football teams that run the mirror offenses with that wing T. One a little bit more forceful about it than the other. The other one trying to pick you up the corners, meeting the Wildcats, but the Vikings just kind of a little bit more straight ahead. Right now, the Vikings with the 7 0 lead. You know, in the pregame, we talked about this being a friendly rivalry. These guys obviously played several times between 2002 2005, very familiar with each other. Fourth down play coming for the Wildcats. Heron rolls, fires, got a man out there. Pass going to be caught by Ed Smith. Smith works his way free near the 30 yard line. Flag coming in at the point of the reception. So we'll check the flag out. Tell Smith you what. comes up hobbling, DJ. Yeah, but on the offensive side, that's a great job of executing the throw and the catch. An eligible man downfield for the wild for the Wildcats and nullifies the reception by Smith. An eligible downfield on the offense. Boy, oh boy. That's tough. And that coming after the timeout taken was taken by the Vikings, but a big mis miscue there by the Wildcats. Almost forced now to punt the football away. No, the Vikings are alert for the possible fake. Aaron will kick. Reed struggles under the near the 13. On the fly at the 20, down at the 21 yard line. Seven minutes and 31 seconds remaining here in the four, in the ball game, and I know that there's still there's enough time if the Camden County defense can, can continue to come in and and as they have consistently been able to stop the last several possessions of the Vikings offense, give their offense, the Camden County offense, the ball back one more time. That's what they'll be looking to do to stop that Viking offense on this possession. The converse, obviously, the Vikings. If they can get together a sustained drive here, that will certainly work well in their favor. On the ground, it's Perry, right side. He's still free, broke loose from one tackler. Now it's a foot race. Perry at the 30, they'll catch up with him near the 24-yard line. But somehow, Daria Perry broke free of the tackles after about a five-yard gain and it turns into a humongous gain for the Vikings of Lyle. Take a look at this action up inside, just not holding on and not holding up, obviously. that Look at that, look at the balance of this young man to continue on. I'm sure that uh, the Camden County players thought he was down, but a great second effort by the defensive back, Lamar Owens, running down, making the touchdown saving tackle. 56 yard run by Darian Perry. And in timeout, their first to second half. Wildcats take a timeout. They have to be stunned, DJ. Hey, they do have to be stunned. But you know what? This guy's not the all-time leading rusher at Lowndes County for no reason. This runs like this. This guy has over 3,400 yards, 38 touchdowns. You know what? That touchdown would have broke the record as he was tied with Cedric Jones, as we mentioned early on. But that's the all-time leading rusher there, and that was a nice game. Potter Richard Musterer whispering in my ear saying that 
players have to play until the end of the play or to the whistle. You're right. And keep in mind now, a player's not down if he lands on top of another player. He actually has to touch the turf. So Perry with the big run for the Vikings, almost changing the complexion of the football game altogether on a 56-yard run. It almost lets the wind out of the sails, but you know, again, you know, if you got a, a mature football team, you gotta realize you just keep playing if you're Camden County. You can't you can't duck your head, you can't give up. Because anything can still happen. There's still seven minutes left on the clock. 118 yards on the evening for Darius Perry on seven carries. On the ground, it's Williams with the football now, working it toward the 20-yard line. They have gotten it to the 19. You have to keep playing. Just keep playing. And I'm sure that's what Coach Heron is saying to his defensive football team. They have not gotten a lot of breaks this evening nor have they created a lot of breaks for themselves. They had the interception there with an opportunity to come down and score, not able to do anything with it. You don't get a 90% win percentage by giving up when things are down. Second down and seven. Glisson took the snap there, gave it on the left side to Reed. Looks like on the carry, yeah, it was Greg Reed on the carry for the Vikings, and Reed got it down near the 10, and they will move the chains. It's a first down for the Vikings. Reed already over 60 yards rushing for that Vikings offense, picks up another five, six yards. And the Vikings starting to sense it themselves. They know if they punch one in here, yes. it's going to be awfully difficult for the Wildcats. Remember, in this part of the field in the first half, Kari Franklin, the quarterback, had a turnover. Wildcats trying to slow some of that Viking momentum. They take a timeout. Camden County's second timeout. <laughs> coach Randy McPherson, a very mild-mannered coach, but there showing some pep and fire. All of us at GPB want to express our thanks to I.J. Rosenberg and his staff at Score Atlanta for their excellent pre-dome coverage of all of our games this weekend at the Georgia Dome. Let's score Atlanta and I.J. Rosenberg. Coach Randy McPherson trying to rebound from that 6-4 and four season last year where they missed the playoffs altogether. Yes. And take it to the finals next weekend. You almost feel the energy in the building here if you're the Vikings. Football at the 12 yard line of the Wildcats. It is first and 10 for the Vikings. On the ground looking for the corner is Perry. Perry hit behind the line of scrimmage. Good defensive work by Robert Williams, the junior defensive back. Once again, the Camden County Wildcats just keep playing. Their defense has really done an excellent job thus far and you know like I, can't, I hate to keep saying it you just keep playing you never know what can happen second down and 15 after the loss by Perry on the previous run five minutes 46 seconds remains in this football game good time to do a check on the timeout situation with both teams with just one left certainly for the Wildcats That behind the line of scrimmage, absolutely nothing there. Oh, great defense up front there. The front four, Ben Stetson, Ridge Williams, Dominic Jordan. Adrian Hargrett with nowhere to go on it. Nice job. Third down conversions on the evening. Three of eight for the Vikings. Two of ten for the Wildcats. Ari Franklin, the sophomore quarterback. With the snap, he'll keep it to kick it straight up the middle. He goes, bang down hard near the seven-yard line, short of the first down marker. McCray on the stop for the Wildcats, but that will bring on a field goal situation for the Vikings. Excellent play by the 5'6 quarterback, Kerry Franklin. 
up inside there, have an opportunity to take the ball and find a hole, run to daylight. Mark Willis now on to try the field goal for the Vikings. This will be a 24 yard effort. He's four of five from 30 to 39 yards away. This one well within his range. Snap, place, kick, plenty of leg on it by Willis. Did he drive it through? Yes, he did. It's a two possession football game now for the Vikings. You're right. Excellent kick there. Extending the lead to 10 to nothing. But still, four minutes on the clock. Say it again. Four minutes. And anything can happen. Yes, you can. <laughs> so the Vikings convert on the 24 yard field goal. They extend their lead to 10 nothing. Mark Willis, the junior kicker. Plenty of distance on that one. Seven play drive of 72 yards. Three minutes, 23 seconds taken off the clock. 404 remains on it. As the Vikings will kick it away now to the Wildcats. Cray will stand deep to receive the kick from Willis. They need a bolt of lightning anywhere they, where they can get it now, DJ. You're right about that, Charles. Deep kick over the head of McCray. And the lightning will have to come from the line of scrimmage. They'll start from the 20. Well, one thing is for sure is that you got a quarterback out there that is in total control and, of course, that understands what needs to happen here in this next possession of downs. Four minutes remaining in this semifinal matchup and probably the biggest challenge of the year facing the Wildcats of Camden County. A relative breeze through the playoffs for the the Wildcats. But a big challenge they face now. Setting a screen is Heron. Threw it high, but the catch was made by Smith, and he's hit immediately behind the line of scrimmage. That's right. Tavares Williams once again, DJ. Tavares, is, uh, he's the guy we talked about in the pregame, and he's, he, he has the motor. He's quick, agile, and hard nose. Loss of two on the play, second down and 12 coming. The clock working its way toward three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Aaron fires a bullet straight up field. This time the catch is made and a good run after catch up near the 30 yard line. With the grab for the Wildcat was Travon Fulton, the wide out. Nice run after the catch there by Fulton because that was about a two or three yard completion there and he was able to shake a couple of tackles and extend uh, the yardage on that play by another seven eight yards. So up to the 30 yard line. Flush offense for the Wildcats. This time Heron going to keep it. Thought they saw something up the middle of the field but nothing there. Quick close by that Viking defense. T.J. Manning and Ridge Spivey. Converging on Heron. Second down. Clock running under three minutes. The winner of this ball game meets North Gwinnett next weekend in the championship ball game 5A division. Second and eight. Right side Heron Rose fires out in the flats. Catch was made by Michael Green. Got about three on the reception to the 35 yard line. Green doubling as a wide receiver. You notice he got a key interception for the Wildcats a little earlier. Approaching the two minute mark. The Wildcats still with the one timeout remaining. They still have not gone to that. That double move that you referred to early Just on. Just keep it DJ. in the back of your mind, though. Keep it in the back of your mind. Out in the flats again. Short pass route. Will they give him the catch? 
Yes, the catch was made by Fulton, but he's about a yard shy of the first down marker. Another one of those quick passes. But then on the other side of that, you got to know that the defenders for the Vikings have to understand, you know, they can't bite, you know, and again, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how this thing play out. A minute 35, it is playing out <laughs> quickly. Fourth down and two could play out on this play if they don't convert. Heron will try to keep it and run for the first down. Good coverage up front by the Vikings. They deny him. Turn the football over to the Vikings. Huge play by the defense for the Vikings. Michael Mitchell on the stop and just covered the ground so quickly on Heron to make the stop. Nice tackle. So the Vikings will take it over on downs and perhaps work their way toward the championship ball game next weekend with a minute 17 left. One first down, maybe two. We'll keep the clock rolling. One will do it with just a one timeout remaining for the Wildcats of Camden County. Again, a, a very well fought, hard fought by both teams. Christian Glisson in now at quarterback for the Vikings. And he's just going to come in and step back and take a knee. So the Vikings of Lowndes in a very low scoring affair. Not what we thought coming in. But they able to get the touchdown in the first half and tack on a field goal in the fourth. And that 10 nothing lead appears to be enough to send them into the finals next weekend. Coach McPherson congratulating his assistant coaches. And a couple of setbacks for the Vikings in this football game. Two first half fumbles. Then another in the second half. The three turnovers or the interception in the second half. But they were able to withstand that. And with the 10 points, it's going to be enough for them to defeat the Wildcats of Camden County and head into that championship ball game next weekend against the Bulldogs. Admirable job. Wildcats not going to try to even burn the timeout. Coach Heron already walking toward the sideline or across the field to congratulate Coach McPherson. So it is the Vikings of Lounge as the coaches meet at midfield to shake hands. And the Vikings win this battle of attrition here at the Georgia Dome. Ten nothing win for the Vikings of Lowndes County over the Wildcats of Camden County. We'll step aside for a timeout, and we will be back to wrap it up from the Dome. Vikings of Lowndes High win this semifinal matchup from the Georgia Dome. They advance to the championship ball game next weekend with a 10 nothing win over the Wildcats. John Nelson standing by with Coach Randy McPherson. Nelly. Here with Coach Mack. First question is a real easy one. How does it feel to play for another state championship? Oh, it feels fantastic. I'm just so proud of our kids. They played so hard. Coaches had a great game plan. I'd like to thank God for blessing us one more time. Uh, he's been doing it all year long. Let's talk about things defensively. I want to say Camden was held to four first downs the entire game. A great effort defensively for you. Uh, it is, and our kids, you know, they say defense wins championship, and that's the truth. Offensively, the wing tee, something you picked up 20 years ago when you were an assistant coach, and it has worked ever since when you were converted. Talk about that offense of yours tonight. Uh, we, uh, we played well. I tell you what, Camden was good. They were strong on defense. They never quit. Uh, I mean, wing tee, that's just what we do. That's what we believe in. Our kids believe in it. We, you know, we're going to stick with it. And the thing is, is that you believe in a team effort. Team offense and team defense gets you team wins and team championships. Best team wins. <laughs> Best team wins. So how much time are you going to give yourself to enjoy this? Uh, I think it's a four-hour drive. So we get on a bus and probably start work on uh, North Gwinnett tomorrow. Well, you go to work on North Gwinnett tomorrow, so will we. Thanks again, Coach. We'll send it back upstairs. We know we're going to Lowndes, guys. The <laughs> beach is closed. <laughs> Thank you, Nelly. Congratulations to Coach McPherson. Great win by the Vikings. They win it 10-0 over the Wildcats of Camden County in this semifinal matchup from the Georgia Dome. Next weekend, Friday night, it'll be the 4A championship, the Eagles of Northside and the Gators of Ware County. 7.30, 30 start there. And then on Saturday, December 15th, again at 7.30, it's the Bulldogs of North Gwinnett. They will meet the winners of the ballgame tonight, the Vikings of Lowndes High.
Charles Ward on behalf of DJ Jones and John Nelson and all of us at GPB, thanking you so much for joining us and saying good night, everybody. Funding for this broadcast of the Georgia High School Association's football semifinals has been provided in part by Georgia Electric Membership Corporation, Wachovia, the Georgia Student Finance Commission, by viewers like you, and the Georgia High School Association, who wish to thank the Georgia Dodge Dealers, State Farm, and Naturally Fresh for their support of GHSA athletic activities.